believe, repent, confess, and be baptized, and that's it, y'all. <laughs> Once again, God has blessed us to be here this morning. Yes, <clears throat> To worship Him in spirit and in truth. And one of the privileges we enjoy while worshiping God is we're able to invest in each other the things that God would have us to share. Yeah. And so in other words, you know how the Bible talks about uh, how iron sharpens iron? Yes, sir. And as a result, both pieces of iron are sharpened. Yeah. Well, we make each other and we help each other to get better Amen. when we come together to worship God. Amen? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm thankful to our brother Lamarcus, yeah. baby brother. Amen. Yeah. Youngest brother <laughs> for the way that he led us in the uh, in the songs this morning Amen. and we're thankful uh, to each of you for lifting up your voices mm -hmm. uh, praising our almighty God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. If you have your Bibles, please turn to Romans <coughs> chapter 5. Romans chapter 5 verse number 3. And while you're turning now, let us continue to pray uh, for those who are in need of prayer. Uh, let's pray for Sister Nay. Uh, continue to pray for Sister Henderson and Sister Wilma. God answered our prayers and brought her back this morning. Amen. Amen. We thank God for blessing us with um, uh, Sister Nita. She traveled a little bit and he brought her back. Yes, sir. Amen. Brought her back home to us. We thank God for you. Yeah. As well as others who names may escape me, but uh, the names haven't escaped my heart. Yeah, right. Uh, there you go. And you know what, church family, even if we don't know of any particular thing or any particular reason, let's just pray for each other anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we can never underestimate the power of a praying church. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5. I'm reading from the New American Standard Version, but during the lesson, I will refer to other verses from different versions. Okay. Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5. And not only this, but we also exult or glory in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance and perseverance proven character and proven character hope and hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us that first part of verse 5 and hope does not disappoint now last week we began our series a hope that will not disappoint and last week we looked at verses 1 and 2 in Romans chapter 5 and we saw how God positioned us through justification. Yeah. We also saw how he gave us access to his grace in which we stand. Mm -hmm. And in the latter part of verse 2, that we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And when we looked at that, we explained how our positioning was made possible by us having faith in him. Yeah. We looked at one of uh, the, the one of our biblical historical giants, if you will, in the person of Abraham. Yeah. Yeah. And how in Romans chapter four, because of Abraham's faith, God accounted it for righteousness. And it is because of our faith that like Abraham, we've been positioned, we've been justified, yeah. and we have access to so many things because of our relationship with God. 
and we explain how we demonstrate our faith or demonstrated our faith in some cases, uh, most of us in here, when we agreed to get baptized in water for the remission of sin, we trusted the work that the Lord did, that the Father did through his son Jesus, so much so that when we heard that story, how he hung, he bled, he died, he was buried, and rose again, that it moved us so much so that we decided to get into the water so that his blood could come in contact with our souls and cleanse us and position us among God's chosen people. And we also closed out last week by talking, uh, when we discussed the, uh, the hope that we have in him in verse 2, the hope of the glory of God. And we talked about how on this side of heaven, we glorify God, mm -hmm. but the, a day is coming when we will be in the same place where his glory is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll still be glorifying him, but yeah. we will be in his glory, yeah. glorifying yeah. him. Yeah. And we went over to the book of Revelation and looked at in chapter 21 and looked at how there would never be any night in heaven mm -hmm. because the glory of God will keep it lit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of that song we would sing sometime. Uh, in the land of fadeless day lies a city for a square. It will never pass away for there is no night there. Mm -hmm. And the glory of God in that place that he's prepared for us, there will never be any night there mm. yeah. because he is the light. Amen. Amen. And not only will there never be any darkness, there won't be any dog behavior there either. All right. All right. Why is that, Brother Thorne? Well, the ones who live in darkness are not going to make it there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then we who walk in the light as he is Come in on. the light. Come on. The Bible teaches us in 1 Corinthians 15 that yeah. we will receive a glorified body. Yeah. Flesh and blood will not make it there. Yeah. So we will be in a glorified body. All right. In a glorified place. Yeah. Amen. And hallelujah, y'all. Yeah. Yes. Glorifying yeah. God throughout eternity. Wow. And as we walk toward our goal, as we travel toward our goal, or as some would say, as we travel on, he talks about a process that we will undergo in this body in verses 3 through 5 in which we will experience some hard times. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the churchy biblical word that we often use is tribulations. Mm -hmm. Tribulations just simply mean hard times. Yes. And this hope that we have in Christ, it will not disappoint us when we face hard times. Mm -hmm. Now, when we look at this passage, verses 3, 4, and 5 in Romans um, chapter 5, now, as we look at that, to, to touch into the vein of this flow, at some point we will revisit verses 17 and 21 in Romans chapter 4, because when Paul wrote this, it was all one letter. But in Romans chapter 5, verses 3, 4, and 5, and I'll just walk through it again for emphasis. And not only this, but we also glorify in our tri glory in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance. And perseverance, proven character. And proven character, hope. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Now, one thing, as we approach hard times, we can go in knowing, key word is no, that we have a hope that will not disappoint us. Yeah. As we shared last week, yeah. one person, one way of defining disappointment is when reality 
and expectations don't meet. In this case, because we're dealing with our Heavenly Father, who's also our God, we know that whatever reality he set forth, his expectations will be met. The Bible teaches us in the book of Isaiah that his word will not return void, but it will accomplish whatever it is that he set it out to accomplish. So his, whatever reality he sets forth, that he speaks forth, his expectations will be met. And as we get ready to go into hard times, or as we get ready to face a storm, if you will, we know that everything is going to be all right. Yes, right. Why is it that we can say that we know that everything will be all right? Well, we have evidence mm -hmm. from the Word of God. Why is the Word of God important? Because it was the Word of God that we believed. Why is the Word of God important? Because the Word of God is the basis of our faith. The Bible teaches us in Romans 10 that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. What is faith? Hebrews chapter 11 verse number 1. Uh, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. When we are hoping for something, we haven't seen them as of yet, as of yet right. but we have some substance to say that our hope in what God is working out for us is real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because the things that God, that God is working out for us are real, we're able to live according to what he has spoken. Just stay with me. We'll connect the dots momentarily. So as we face storms and we see storms coming or we're heading into a storm or in the middle of the storm, there are some things that we know. What do we know? Well, we have to look at the substance of our hope. What, does, what is it that we're able to find in the Word of God, which is, where we, which is the substance of of our hope and where we can read about evidence of that which is unseen. Please turn with me to Romans chapter 10, not Romans, Hebrews chapter 10. I'm so anxious to get to Romans, y'all. I don't even want to lay down the groundwork first, y'all. Y'all just pray with me, pray for me and ride with me if you will. Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 30. Because in order to have a hope and embrace a hope that will not disappoint, there are some things that we must first know. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 30, listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says, For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, and again the Lord will judge his people. But before we get to the vengeance and the Lord judging his people, look at that first part of verse number 30. I read the entire verse for textual integrity purposes, but look at the first part of verse number 30. The Bible says, for we know him who said. As we approach the storms in our lives, we know that when they're over, we won't be disappointed because we know him who said? What do we know about him who said? Yeah, yeah. Well, let's revisit what we read in Romans chapter 4 in verse number 17 and verse number 21. What do we know about him who said? The first thing we know, and, and we're looking at this again for emphasis, verse 17, the Bible says, as it is written, a father of many nations, I have made you, he's talking to Abraham, in the presence of him whom he believed, that being God, even God who gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist. Yes. So one of the things we know about him who said yeah. is he's able to give life to the dead. Yeah. Another thing we know about him who said uh -huh. is he's able to call into being that which does not exist. Right. Mm. So as we face a storm, yeah. mm. as we 
uh, endure a storm, yeah, yeah, yeah. as we brace ourselves for an upcoming storm, let us be mindful of him yes. and what he said. All right. What do we know about him? Is he's able to give life to the dead. Yeah. What do we know about him? He is able to call into being that which does not exist. Yeah. What else do we know about him who said in verse number 21, the Bible says in Romans 4, 21, and being fully assured that what God has promised, he was also able to perform. Yes. Now, if that don't make you say hallelujah, you just might be unhallelujahable. <laughs> but what do we know about him yes. and, and him who said it? Mm -hmm. We know that he is able to perform Every promise that he made. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Promise keep. Yeah. Please return to Romans 5. Mm -hmm. So we know that what we know about him is he's able to speak life into the dead. Yeah. He's able to call into existence that which does not exist. All right. He is able to perform all of his promises. Mm -hmm. We talked a little bit about how he worked with Abraham. And I'm not going to stay there too long. I went a little bit more in detail last week, but to drive the point home. But we know that Abraham was up in age. Yeah. We know his wife was up in age. Mm -hmm. And we know that physically she lacked the ability to, to get pregnant and carry a child. However, he took God at his word. Yeah. Impregnated his wife Sarah had a son named Isaac, and from Isaac, many generations were brought forth. And God was able to do that. Why? Because he's able to speak that into existence, which does not exist. Right. And he's able to perform every promise that he makes. What else do we know about our God? What else do we know about him? And, and, the, and what else do we know about him? We know that in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse number 9, that he's not slack concerning his promises. Yeah. But it is his will, it is his desire that nobody should perish. The God who's able to perform all of his promises, the God who is able to call things into existence that don't exist, the God who is able to give life to the dead yeah. does not desire that any of us should be eternally lost. Mm -hmm. What else do we know about our Heavenly Father? What else we know about Him is before He gets to this point in verse number 3 of Romans chapter 5 mm -hmm. where He talks about us dealing with struggles that He prepares us for the upcoming struggles by positioning us in verses 1 and 2. See, one thing, when we look at God, two things, I'm gonna give, uh, two things I want us to remember. When God starts something new, yeah. he does it with a miracle. Yeah. Yeah. All right, keep that and put that in your file cabinet. Uh -huh. The second thing is, is when God deploys his plan, he does it in an orderly fashion. Uh -huh. Where do we see the orderly fashion? Uh -huh. In Romans 1 and 2, he positioned us and he gave us access to his grace, yep. and he put uh, and he put the hope of being in his eternal glory before us. Yeah. He says, I'm gonna position you first. Yeah. I'm gonna give you access to my grace second. Yeah. And in this grace, according to the Bible, it is in this grace that we stand. Mm. One way of looking at it is last time we were together, we talked about how how uh, how justification was our position. And the peace that we got from justification was our disposition. But standing in God's grace was our residence. But, but I'm going to go ahead and annotate that and call it our zip code. Right. Why is that? Because it's too many people in God's grace to amen somebody. As many people as there are in God's grace, he's given us our own zip code. Yeah. So he positioned us in his grace. And he says, now that you have access to all of my promises, as a result of me justifying you as righteousness, I want you to know that hard times will come. Yep, yep. I don't want to bypass, is what he's saying to us, verses 1 and 2, and throw you into verses 3, 4, 
4 and 5. Right. He took the time to possession us in verses 1 and 2 so that we could be armed and equipped to withstand the hard times that would come in verses 3, 4, and 5. All right. And so what do we learn? We learn that he uses hard times mm -hmm. as a character building process. Mm -hmm. And what this character building process does mm -hmm. is it secures, makes us feel secure yeah. in the hope that we have in him. All right. mm -hmm. We're able to glory in our sufferings yeah. Yeah. because we are certain of our hope. Yes. Why are we certain of our hope? Because our hope that we have in him is a hope that does not disappoint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what do we know? What else do we know? We know that when we are in a bad place uh -huh. or experiencing a bad time, that we can celebrate preemptively because we know that God is doing two things. He's going to bring us through and he's using it to build us up. Yeah. Look, look here, let me tell you, let me, let me break it down for you this kind of way as we used to say. See, there are people who will give us a hard time just because they want to make our lives difficult. Come on. Some of us may have been with those people at once upon a time. Yeah. Don't admit yeah. that, but we all, amen, somebody, but we all know. But the key is, God, who is our Father, I think sometimes we forget that He's our Father as well as our God, but God, who is our Father, he allows us to go through hard times not to torment us but to improve us Come on. and the way that he improves us is it is in two ways one is it makes our it improves our character and secondly it reassures us that the hope that we have in him is one that will not disappoint us right. and brothers and sisters mm -hmm. when we look at what he does what does he invest in our lives? What does he add to us? When we look at what he does, think about what parents do with, with children from time to time. Uh, uh, look, look at it this way. Uh, for those of you who've, who've been blessed with the family gift and who are either raising children or who have raised children, sometimes you give them a lot of things to do at home. And it's not always for punishment, but it's to help them to grow up and be responsible citizens. I think I may have shared this uh, explanation before, but if I have, just, just say amen and keep going. When we look at the household, when we look at the home, the home, it was a coin, it served several purposes. It was, it was the first church for many of us, because that's the place where we first learned about Jesus. Secondly, it was the first school, because it was the first place where we learned our ABCs, our one, two, threes, and our colors. But lastly, the home was also our first place of employment. We learned how to clean up. We learned how to cut grass. Yeah. We learned how to start a job and not finish it until it was done. And when we left home, we knew that if we couldn't get a job doing anything else, we could get a job cleaning up or cutting somebody's yard. Yeah. And church family, that day it seemed unfair at the time when we were kids. But the hard times that our parents put us through, yes. when we look back at it, it equipped us for the life that was waiting for us down the road. Amen. And when we look at what God does, when he allows trouble to come in our lives, he's not doing that to inflict pain on us so he can look at us and shake our fingers or, or maim us or, 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 or take things, or, what's the word I'm looking for, or subtract things from us. But he uses those moments to add things to us. What does he add to us? In verses 3 through 5, he adds perseverance. Yeah. What is perseverance? It's our ability to pursue a goal or a passion over time and stick with it even if we encounter obstacles or setbacks. And brothers and sisters, if we know anything about our living, if we know anything about life, sometimes we will experience setbacks. Amen. We'll even go through seasons where it seems like as soon as we get rid of one, we're stepping right into another yeah. one. Sometimes it feels like as soon as we solve one problem, another one comes as if it's a domino effect. Yeah. And you're saying, Lord, when is it go all in? But the key is, he allows that to happen, happen so that we can continue to pursue
pursue him and his righteousness in the face of adversity. Look at it this way. If Jesus, who was his only begotten, experienced adversity uh, during his during his walk, during his during his walk here on the earth, then guess what? We will experience it as well. That's right. We know Jesus experienced adversity. He experienced it before he got to the cross. Betrayed, lied on, accused of having a demon. How do you go accuse the Son of God of having a demon in John chapter 8? But the, but the point that I'm making is, lest we get lost in the details, he uses hard times to teach us perseverance. And what perseverance says is that no matter how difficult things are, I'm going to stand on what's right because I know my daddy in heaven above got my back. Yeah. Secondly, in, in, in the passage, the Bible says that in addition to perseverance,